Hello and welcome to Tools for Navigating, Embracing, and Transforming Chaos. Uh, this is our session that is particularly for people of color as a gift, as a care package to each of you, full of practices for being in the midst of chaos with some real attention to uh, moving from reaction to response. And so just to start off, we have a song that we wanna share with you. And my name is Matthew. I'll be one of your two facilitators for our session. And this song has the lyrics right on the screen. The words are, loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. And we share this song because so often we come from people uh, and ancestors and communities who know how to take on work and know how to carry extra effort. And uh, once we learn how to take on more, sometimes it's hard to also let go of what's not ours, to have to hold. And so I invite you to sing along. I'll sing this song a couple times, about three, and join if you would like. You're very welcome to join, even if it's in your quiet singing voice, because for today, I'm not gonna hear you, but I do welcome your singing. And so here it goes. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Last time. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. I'm gonna stop this screen share and let you see my co-facilitator more clearly. This is Irva Baden. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hey, y'all. How you doing? We are bringing this to you from our individual spaces on one of the hottest days of the year. Uh, just thought you might like to maybe feel a little compassion for us as we feel for you. Um, and welcome, truly welcome. And uh, first, I want to say how much I bless and appreciate the work that we are all doing all the time and particularly right now this is an unprecedented time at least in my lifetime and i'm 71 years old so um i i just need to acknowledge that we are still here we are here and we remain here um i'm an energy worker i'm a contemporary shaman i'm a process work person i do all kinds of stuff um, and mostly, I do what I call is just helping people to ground and center themselves in themselves. Because there's so much stuff going on in the world all the time, and right now, it's amazing, that, you know, sometimes we have a tendency, or I have a tendency to want to escape. And I may want to escape by sleeping, eating, just, you know, zoning out, not taking on responsibilities. Yes, I have used all of those excuses. And at the end of the day, I still have to come back to myself. One of the things that I want to talk to you about is uh, the extensive trauma that's happening right now in our world and how we can manage that trauma in ourselves. Matthew, anything you want to add in there? No, but uh, a pandemic is trauma. <laughs> to be in constant chaos, even if you've been in it your whole life, is a trauma for your body. 
So I'm happy to share and offer some things that I have learned and keep teaching and keep learning about trauma response in the body, um, because that's, that's one of the places we sometimes overlook. Uh, we want to think out solutions and suggestions and get stuff done. For me, the first place to address that is in my own body, because that's what carries my, my intellect, my problem solving. And if my body gets out of whack, everything else is out of whack. So, Matthew, you have something here. We did the song. You do have another activity. I do. <laughs> yes. I'll take it. And, um, great. So this next activity um, is going to ask you to do some reflection. And so you can do this reflection uh, on paper. You could draw and reflect. Or you could simply just uh, be where you are and close your eyes and just do a little bit of remembering. Um, and so if you are trying to scramble to get the paper, don't worry, you'll have a couple minutes because uh, I just want to share a little story as we head into this. Uh, because in the midst of this pandemic and in the midst of high chaos, we're often still asked to take action in some way whether that feels like an internal calling or it feels like it's pressure from the outside world or even a direct request from someone we care about. And that discernment process can feel really different when so many things around us are shifting. It may be harder to find that quiet, still place inside that helps you reach clarity uh, regularly. And I'm, uh, a little bit about me is I am an artist and musician, and I'm also an activist trainer. And so I support activists and people making social change to bring their wisdom forward. And uh, in 2014, that work uh, uh, had me constantly thinking about Ferguson, Missouri, uh, partially because I have family who live out there in St. Louis and the surrounding town. Uh, and then partially because as a black person and as a person of color in that moment, I couldn't escape the constant uh, feeling of pressure that I need to do something. That there's so much happening in this world and I really started to feel this tug inside of, I need to do something more, what do I need to do? And so I started talking with people to try and strategize about what to do. Uh, I came up with an idea of holding some space for people locally in Philadelphia where I live. And all of those ideas just never settled in my body in a way that felt like it was actually meeting that sense that I had internally. But I knew there was a clear feeling that I needed to do something. And so uh, I talked with friends, I tried to journal, I was trying to do everything I could. And then at one point I just got quiet and I meditated for a little bit. I sat in silence and I left that silence after a couple minutes and felt this urge to check my email, which is not my go-to place after I have a lot of internal silence, but I followed that urge and I opened it up and there was a request for uh, me to actually go support people in Ferguson from someone who I hadn't been talking to about all of this. And so suddenly uh, things aligned. My feelings inside and my thoughts about what to do and what I could do matched up with what I felt my capacity was. And it helped me really choose to move forward and support organizers there in the ground for a month. And so that's a little bit about how I use the discernment process. And now I want to invite you to think about how have you um, discerned how to take action. So if you have your paper nearby, you can grab it, you can draw, or you can close your eyes or lower your gaze to something soft. Feel free to look away from the screen in this moment and just listen to my voice as I walk you through a little bit of a reflection activity. So to start off, just notice your breath.
Notice how you're breathing. No need to judge it in this moment as this, this is the right or wrong way to breathe. Try to just let it be. Feel yourself in your seat, wherever you are. If you're on the ground, if you've chosen to stand, find yourself in a position that will feel comfortable for you for a couple minutes. Maybe that's even on the floor. That's fine. And I invite you to remember a time when you felt drawn into action, that feeling that you needed to do something, that sense that something needed to happen and you might be a part of it. And if you have a couple moments in mind, try to choose one be with a person one-on-one -on -one in your family or at work in a volunteer role in an organization just choose one one moment where you felt pulled to take action and i invite you to think about when did that start when did you notice the pull What was happening around you at that time? Who were the people around you? And where were you in the world? Were you inside or outside? What did the weather feel like at that time of year? And think about what was happening inside of you. What was happening inside of you? What did your body feel like? What was going through your mind at that time? Who were the voices you heard or were paying attention to or actively were trying to ignore? And how did you start to come to a place of clarity? How did you know whether or not to move forward? Even if it was just a little bit. What helped you get a sense of how to move forward? Bring it to mind as clearly as possible, including what was happening inside of you that helped you come with clarity. And then start to take those memories. And if you're drawing, you can start to slowly wrap up your drawing. And if you're listening and remembering, start to come back to your breath. And 
in this moment. Begin to feel your seat or the ground beneath you in this moment. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes again, put down your drawing. And if you are not ready, you can hit pause on this video because we're gonna keep going. All right, so now that you're back, I want you to just write down what were some of the things that happened inside of you and outside of you. Just take a minute to just write what were some of the things happening for you inside and outside that helped you come to a choice. We'll give you a minute now to do that. And that's been about a minute. So if you need a little bit more time, you can always pause the video to finish your reflection. And so I want you to look at that list and sort it a little bit into two places. And I want you to put an F by anything that seems like a feeling a feeling, an emotion, a sense. Just put a little F for feeling next to it. And then as you're doing that, I also want to invite you to put a T towards any thoughts that you are having, whether they were analysis from the situation or practical experience-based things. F for feeling, T for thought. If you want to mark it another way to differentiate them, you can. That's fine. And I want to share that uh, you may have more feelings or you may have more thoughts about how to come to some clarity. And discernment is often a mix of the two. It's not just our logical thinking, our thoughts, or just our feelings. Like even in that moment for me to go to Ferguson, it was, I felt this internal energy. I also felt anxious about the moment. I felt angry, I felt sad. I also felt really calm too. And some of those feelings were contradictory, but I had all of those feelings that were drawing me to move. And then I had a lot of thoughts too about I have the capacity right now, I have a support community, I know where I can sleep when I get there. And that discernment, especially in high chaos moments, benefits from us holding the two. Like I even have used this system in the current pandemic moment and the uprisings uh, around black lives, as I've had to sort, what are my feelings about this moment and what are my thoughts? And then being able to look at both of those together helped give some clarity for what type of action I wanted to take. And so I wanna give you all a chance to practice that. 
And so you're going to get a chance to make a list of feelings and thoughts for a place where you currently are feeling pulled towards some sort of action. So start off with choosing what sort of action you're being pulled to do. Maybe that's to serve on a racial justice committee. Maybe that is a new committee in your meeting. Maybe it's a role in your family that you're being asked to fill. Or maybe it's something inside a larger movement that you just keep having a sense, oh, should I do something about this? And we ask this question because a pandemic can really throw off our thinking and start us seeing possibilities that we couldn't see before. We may feel, I, I have had many conversations with people who are like, I feel like maybe I should leave my job right now. That consideration is, might be unique, but it's also very true for many people in a moment of lots of other things changing in our circumstances. So I invite you to just take a moment to write down feelings and thoughts you have about one place you are being pulled into action so that you aren't just moving into that from a place of reaction, but from a fuller picture of what's possible for you. We'll give you a minute or so to do that now. And if you want to keep going after that minute, again, you'll be able to pause. So go for it. And if you hate silence while you do activities like this, you're welcome to turn on some music too. <laughs> so no need to do things exactly as we're doing them in this moment. Since this class is recorded, we've designed it to be flexible so that you can try and personalize it in a way that'll work for you. There might be points where we play music or other things, but do what you need to do to get the most. All right. So with that, with that choice that you've uh, started to think about, um, you, uh, we offer this as a tool. You may return to it at any point if it's helpful for you, uh, especially during this pandemic. For the next tool, I'll pass it over to you, Urva. I'm still learning the technology. <laughs> Takes me a minute, folks. And today it's a question of turning off the AC and then un unmuting so that y'all can hear me. Okay, so here's a very, I think, a very sort of strange, maybe even controversial statement. Trauma has its benefits. I know you think that the heat has gotten to me today, but check this out. Trauma does have, have its benefits. It is how we learn to negotiate in the world. Think of children, young babies, learning to walk. Trauma happens, they fall down. It's not the end of the world, things move on. There are some, some reactions that happen, we'll talk about that, but they learn something there and they learn a skill and they move on and they, they go forward. 
Now, this whole pandemic thing and all ensuing areas of trauma that are happening, not only here in the United States, but around the world, um, I believe that there, there are opportunities for learning also. And I know it feels like a big stretch, like what could be the benefit of that? But let's see if we can apply some tools to figure out, okay, what am I learning from this? And the first thing I want to talk about is what's called the trauma response. So let's go back, let's go back, let's go way on way back when. Some of you may actually remember that song. And um, I do want to go back to very primitive time. Um, let's say pretty much caveman-ish stuff because there's a lot of trauma going on. You're walking down your your dirt path or whatever and all of a sudden there's a saber-toothed tiger. Well, that's a trauma. And in the nanoseconds following seeing that animal, your brain says, whoa, expletive. Should I run? Should I just stand still and freeze? Should I try to fight this thing? Should I help me, Matthew? You like the uh, fawn? Should I fawn? Try, should collapse. I can, should I play dead? <laughs> right. That's for me. That's collapsing. Should I play dead? And that those those responses come quickly in the in our primitive brain at any time when we experience a trauma. Anytime. So it's fight, flight, freeze, collapse, or fawn, as, as Matthew likes that word. I, I, like, I like collapse. Hiding out. Okay, so there are benefits to each one, I'm sure. And at some point, you may take some time to think about a particular trauma that, it, it, that you experienced and what was your initial trauma response and how did it serve you? Some folks like to go back to childhood for that. Um, and let me give an example. When I was about, oh, six or seven or eight years old, um, my mom took me out of public school in Baltimore and put me in a Catholic school in Baltimore, which was just newly integrated. This is in the 50s. And I was the anomaly in the school. There was a colored girl in the school. We were colored people then, okay? Just to be, be clear, we were colored people then. And so after I was there for about a week, week and a half, some of the sixth graders in the school got me in a corner uh, on the playground because they wanted to know if colored girls wore panties. They could have asked. But no, they wanted to lift up my skirt and see for themselves. And in that moment, I experienced a trauma, and my reaction was fight, couldn't do it, too many of them. Flight, too many, couldn't get out, they had me surrounded. Freeze, yes, just froze. Collapse, no, I stood my ground, but I couldn't do anything. So think about the options that were available to you during a trauma. Fight, flight, freeze, collapse. And bring that forward into your life now. Do you notice any pattern at all? Do you notice any repetition of certain reactions? Without judgment, people. Without judging, we're not judging ourselves, we're just noticing right now. So take some time just now, take a, a minute or, or so to write down something that you've noticed about your trauma reaction. And breathe, remember to breathe. I'll give you about a minute or so. And again, I'll say, remember to breathe, because sometimes we forget. The other thing that happens 
in that instant of recognition of trauma is that the cognitive brain steps in because the reptilian brain at this point is like, whoa, fight, fight, freeze, collapse. But the cognitive brain steps in and says, oh, no, I recognize this. This is, this is some big trauma thing going on. And to avoid this tomorrow, next week, next year, I will always perhaps avoid this path going down this road. And I will never come out without my spear. Now think about that in current day trauma stuff, particularly for kids. And if you want to go that deep, particularly for yourself, when is the time in which your cognitive brain said, I got this. And from now on, I will never fill in the blank. And I will always fill in the blank to avoid this kind of trauma. Take a few minutes maybe to write a little something about that if you feel so inclined. And remember to breathe because there's learning in there. No matter what we did, we learned something. Keep breathing. Big breath. Come on back. If you're still writing, go ahead. I won't know that you're not paying attention to me and I won't feel bad. But get this get this wealth of information out on paper so that you can remember it. There's a lot of good stuff in all of this. Lord knows why would we ever think about looking reviewing traumas in our lives? Because there's good information there that we can use anytime and we can also teach others so take a breath what were some of the things that you learned um, about yourself and I think we're going to go to writing questions actually for each of the responses fight flight freeze collapse Freezes, collapse. Fawn. That's collapse. That's fight, collapse. Flight, fight, fight, freeze. Freeze, wow. collapse. Okay. Listen, I'm 71. Sometimes I forget stuff. That's why <laughs> Matthew's here. Thank God. But seriously, what do you? See? What worked for you and what didn't? So let's talk maybe a little bit about fighting. In face of something like a saber-toothed tiger and you without your trusty spear, how are we doing with fighting? Mm, I'm thinking not so good. So that may not be a particular remedy that worked well. Freezing may have been a remedy that worked well, particularly if you could slow your breathing, perhaps whatever the antagonist was was see, seeing you not as something, as a threat. And you could just be calm and just let it slide on by. So think about that. Collapsing is like into a puddle of just nothingness. And again, sometimes that's a very good strategy because if it's some large anger trauma that's coming out and you collapse, you may be able to get down underneath of it and avoid, say, the, the tornado of stuff that's coming at you. No judgment, right or wrong. These are all just tools. Take a breath and see what comes to you. Matthew, if you want to add anything, jump in. 
Yeah, I was just thinking of an example that I could offer here. Sure. So, um, like I uh, grew up in a multiracial community uh, and um, often would get targeted uh, for being the trouble, the causer of trouble. <laughs> whether or not I did anything. Um, and from a very young age, my reaction was to fight first, to try and resist it, to speak up, to even turn around and like witness the person trying to be cruel. Um, and that often wouldn't work. And then the repercussions would escalate. <laughs> uh, and so my next reaction would be to collapse or try to disappear as much as possible, not respond, not say anything, just try and placate. And so this became a reaction that then lived in my body. Uh, uh, that even shows up now when I'm organizing, uh, especially when I'm organizing in multiracial communities. Uh, and I feel the moment that I want to fight or disagree or be angry. And my body now actually goes to, oh, you feel like you want to fight in that community? Disappear. That's going to be actually the thing that you need to do. And so I may end up avoiding the conflict, not being direct with someone, which also doesn't both help me or that other person in that moment. It doesn't help us build what we're trying to build. Mm -hmm. But it does come out of that past trauma place. There's a lot of learning in there. Uh, it's just hard to hang with it and 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 glean the learnings that we get. Uh, it's not a comfortable place. I have to admit that. Um, but we're learning. Mm -hmm. Cool. So hopefully you've made a list of your feelings and thoughts about past traumas in your life and what you've learned. Um, I am reading my notes. It's true. It's traumatic to me. Matthew, you give me, give, give me, yeah, give me, give me a cue here. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> if I, um, so if you were thinking about those trauma responses and you haven't finished taking notes, just take notes. It's worth trying to see if you have had experiences of freeze, collapse, fight, or flight. Even to have some history, because once we have that history, we can recognize it more easily when it shows up in our current life. Uh, even about what didn't work about it. So that when we find ourselves in that same place, we can do something different. And when what worked is available to you, um, we want you to be able to move forward in that way more consciously. The, the uh, conscious brain, not just the reptile brain that is running along trying to survive, but that other part of you that can make choice. Uh, if you start to become familiar with the experiences, it's easier to notice it in the moment. Oh. And that's the piece that I was um, mm -hmm. trying to think of. And, and part of doing that work of remembering our current responses and what happens is because our bodies will often play out what came before us. So like my fight to collapse response is the same response my mother has, is the same response my great grandmother went to. <laughs> And so for me to make a different choice is actually making a different choice for a lineage of folks that have led me to make a particular choice. And so part of this excavation work is not just about you in this moment, it's also about you understanding where do you come from. Even if you don't know those people, these responses live in our bodies because they've come from our history. Irva could say more about epigenetics and trauma and how it lives in your body. So I'll pass it to her for that part. But I do want to just lift up that these reactions and doing the work on them is about long-term healing of generations. Absolutely. Um, you may need to cut me short on this. This is one of my favorite topics it's called epigenetics. And briefly for me, my, my limited understanding of it is that the traumas that people experience have an effect not only on them and in some ways on their DNA, hold on, on their DNA, but then that tr 
trauma response, trauma memory, trauma scar, if you will, gets passed on to the next generation. So the next generation has that trauma number one from, from mother, say, and then that person, the child, has a trauma of their own. So now they're compounded. Trauma from the past from mom, their own trauma. They have kids, pass it on. Now we got three. It's cumulative, people. It keeps going on and on and on. The thing that's interesting to me is that the first actual really good academic and physiological studies about this were done on Jewish Holocaust survivors. And they checked particularly particular um, health issues, psychological issues, and the way people made choices from following the children of Holocaust survivors, the grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren. And they found an enormous amount of information in the similarities. Now, my pet peeve is how come nobody started studying uh, African-descended people who were brought, you know, whose ancestors were brought here under horrifically traumatic ex experiences? What, you know, makes me speechless almost. But anyhow, let's talk about in terms of us right here, right now. So some of that stuff, some of those scars, if you will, some of those maybe even birthmarks, if you want to call it that, you choose a name, still lives in us. And there may be a way, as, as Matthew was illustrating, is that we may react to things in a way that maybe we don't quite understand because we're reacting to something from the past, from our history, from our ancestors' history, but there's still the response memory in us. Um, there is work that- invite, Take a breath. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's true, because mm -hmm. I do get, thank you, Matthew, thank mm -hmm. you. That's for you and for everybody listening and watching. <laughs> Feel free to jump in. Also, because when we start to recall those past traumas, sometimes we start to relive them. And so I just want to slow us down also so that you can also continue to tend to yourself as this goes along. Please so, do. If there are any ways that you need to pause or do something else for a moment, do. And the next practice that we want to share is one around recovery. Everybody take a, take a big breath and maybe move your body, stretch. Matthew is good at that, stretching around. Oh my gosh. Oh God, yes. Mm. I feel you need to get up and, and step away from the computer, whatever you're looking at. Uh, do that, do that. Be gentle and kind to yourself. And you may notice that you might be feeling a little, for want of a better word, wonky. Maybe a little tense, some emotion may be coming up. Some people might term that feeling as feeling ungrounded or uncalm. So there is a practice that um, we'd like to share with you about how to retrieve your solidity, your calmness, your grounding, your centeredness. And it's an exercise that I call roots down, branches up. Go for it. We're going to invite you to get comfortable somewhere, either sitting or standing. This takes a little bit of time. And Matthew is going to demonstrate, I believe, standing. Yep, yep. And I'm going to demonstrate the sitting position. So, people sometimes call this calming or grounding. You can use either term, whatever fits for you. But basically, settle yourself where you are right now. 
maybe a little stretch in the neck. Deep breath, sigh. Mm. Mm. Let your shoulders drop. Mm. Then maybe let your arms hang a bit, either if you're standing or if you're sitting, let your arms be supported in your lap, if that feels comfortable for you. Notice whether your chest is feeling tight or not. If it's tight, try to take a deep breath, expand it and loosen it. Notice your belly. Just let that thing hang. Just let it. But again, the point is to be loosening the muscles there in your abdomen. Let them go soft, just for now. Let them go soft like, like butter melting in the sun. And your buttocks also. Let it relax. We sit sometimes with clenched butts. Let it relax. Right here, right now, in this moment, you can relax. Couple more deep breaths. Let your thighs relax. Even if you're standing, you can find a relaxed pose that lets your thighs just go sort of loose. And below your knees, your calves can loosen. You can still be supported by your legs, but you can relax. And spread out your toes and your fingers. Let your arms hang, toes and fingers spread out, stretch them far, and then let them just relax in their own natural position. Do a body scan and see if there's any area that's tight and needs a little more encouragement to relax. And let it relax with a deep breath, breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth, make the sound. And just be, for right now, just be. There's nothing you need to do or say or take care of in this moment. And when you feel that relaxation in your body, imagine, if you will, a ball of energy somewhere between your chest and your lower belly, wherever feels comfortable to you. Breathe it in. This is your energy. And as you breathe it in, it can expand. As you breathe out, you can relax even more. And with the next breath in, let that energy divide into two streams of energy. Whatever color you like is good. And let those streams of energy start to move down the inside of your legs, right inside, in the bones, in the muscles, in the tissue. Another deep breath in. You can intensify the color if you like. You can send it further down. Because your goal is to connect this energy with the Earth's core. 
breathe in, see it intensify, and send it down a little bit further, down your legs, past your knees, to your ankles. And imagine, if you will, that the earth is waiting for the connection, waiting for you to send the energy down through the soles of your feet, down to connect with the earth's energy. Deep breath in. Send it out. Feel a connection in whatever intensity is comfortable for you. The earth holds us to her. We call it gravity. The earth helps us to stand on the surface and to be connected. So let your energy move down into the earth, giving thanks, if you like, giving support for our earth, sending it down. Some of you may want to send it down through layers of shale and bedrock and all manner of stuff, maybe even down to the molten core of the earth. And some of us may want to send our energy down into the earth and to connect with the home earth of Africa. Just see how that works for you. And perhaps that earth is reaching up for you to connect, to help remember. There is strength there, determination, beauty, wisdom. And with the next breath that you take in, draw those energies up. Breathe it up. You've sent your roots down as far as they want to go to the earth, to the African continent, whatever feels right for you. You sent your roots down to connect with ancient wisdom, healing. Again, whatever works for you in this moment and start to breathe it up. If you can imagine a color, that's fine. Or a sensation, breathe it up some more. Notice it moving up your legs, maybe to your knees now, or maybe to your hip joints. Breathing it up into your belly. And feel that energy coalescing in your belly. This is good grounding energy good energy of wisdom, ancient and current wisdom. Breathing it up, letting it accumulate. There are energy centers for those of you that know chakras. We can talk about them later, but bring this energy up now. Feel it move up just below your diaphragm. With a deep breath. And only if it feels comfortable, let it move up, help it, let the colors change, let the sensation change so that it moves out into your heart, up through your heart, to your throat, and out your shoulders, into your arms. And you notice that you're becoming like a tree. Your roots have gone down, and now your branches are coming up. Lift them. Lift them. 
lift your branches. Let the energy flow up. If it feels comfortable, let it come up your throat, your face, back of your head. Even let it swirl around your ears so that it moves up along with your branches. And branches grow now up out of the top of your head, connecting with spirit, with the infinite that is always there to guide us. Always there. Whatever you call it, whatever term fits for you, whether it's God or goddess or particular names, the infinite is always around us. Let yourself have this time to connect with it. And you have to do nothing except breathe. Just breathe. You can gently let your arms come down if they're tired, perhaps even crossing your hands over your heart, letting the energy coalesce there or in your belly or your belly and your heart. Take a deep breath. Blow it out. Open your eyes. Another deep breath. Look around. Exhale. Look around at your world and understand that you have sent your branches up. Sent your roots down and your branches up. And in this way, you have connected with the earth and the earth's wisdom. And you've connected with your place, with the infinite, with spirit. And all of this energy lives in you. Take a minute or two, just very gently, easily, write down something that's come to you just now in this, whatever it is. Don't judge it, just write it down. You might reflect on how was that? So there are advantages to being this grounded. And sometimes we don't have 10 or 15 minutes to send energy down oh so slowly and wave our arms up into the sky. Perhaps stuff is popping off. So Matthew is going to guide us in a method of accelerating the experience. And I still call it roots down, branches up. And if you have a better name for it, whatever fits for you. But this is an exercise that you can do quickly and fairly surreptitiously. So people don't go, what, what, what is she doing? What's he doing? And so what if they do? Okay. So I'll show you a couple different versions of this exercise. And if my volume sounds off, or but please let me know. That's good. Great. All right. So one version, if you're, you do not care about anybody who is around you and you have let that go, is to start with yourself where you are. You can cross your arms across your torso. Let me make myself bigger for y'all. Um, you can cross your arms across your torso. Uh, Probably not stopping. I just stepped on my dog. So sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, back with y'all. <laughs> and she is fine. <laughs> um, cross, touch yourself, and then you're going to go 
roots down and put arms down and bend your knees a little if you're able. Bend your knees. Even if you're sitting, just give that attention to your knees. And then you go branches. You come back to yourself, your branches, up. That's real slow. Speed it up. You can go roots down, branches up. Roots down, branches up. Roots down, branches up. And you can keep going on this for a series of times. That's my dog now. Welcome to meeting my dog. <laughs> and so uh, you can do this very big like that. Like uh, the other day when there were um, protests and a lot of police violence near my house, what did I do inside my house? Roots down. Ancestors, you got me. You have resource. You have taught me for years. I feel you. I take that in, your wisdom for surviving circumstances harder than this. And then branches up to remember my connection with divinity, your connection with spirit, with light, so that you can expand beyond just what you feel reactive to in the moment. Now, if you want to do it subtly, you can always go, oh, roots down, branches up. It's one subtle way. Or another is to just plant your feet and send the intention down. Plant your butt in a chair, roots down, branches up, roots down, branches up. And I encourage you, if you are doing this, to keep it going more than three times. Keep it going until you feel a difference. Because one of the principles this works on is the principle of a mantra, of letting the words the sounds do some of the work for you. It's not just about the logical brain. It's about saying those words and feeling those sensations in your body till your body can start to feel that sense, not just your mind saying, oh, cool, I got ancestors. They got my back. Oh, yes, and spirit light. No. Recognize the expansiveness of spirit in the mid of mid recognizing it in the middle of chaos or worry or stress or your response isn't always quick. So let yourself be slow with it. I did this at a protest um, a while ago. Just walking along with everybody, roots down, branches up, roots down, branches up, just walking. <laughs> and so I invite you to just try this, adapt it. If you wanna change some words, change some words. But the sense of we come from places and people who have survived much more than we may be feeling in this moment. And that even in the struggles of today and whatever action we are taking or reaction we feel stuck in, spirit is still there. That still quiet light is still inside you. All we need to do is turn our attention towards it to help our bodies start to do that work, even in the background. Oh, there's one more practice for you. Thanks, Irva. Then mm. we have one last one. We're reaching the end of our time together. And we have one last one that we wanted to leave each of you with. Oh. And that uh, is a blessing to yourself. I can sit here in my home and try and offer a blessing to you. And I do. I honor you. I respect you. I believe you are bringing something to the world that we haven't seen before in your unique way. But my words won't do it the same way that your words will or your sense of your own connectedness to spirit well. And so I want to give you a query to speak Quaker speak or, and to speak non-Quaker speak. I want to give you a question to reflect on. And then we're going to take a couple minutes uh, where Irva and I will hold some silence and uh, space of worship for you to reflect on this. And that tapping is my dog. If you have not, dog hiding back there. <laughs> These are the things you have in internet teaching at home. 
And so uh, what I want to share is for you to do some reflection work. There's a person. There's now a human behind me. The dog turned into a human? Um, I didn't know I had these magical powers in my home. I don't think I'm fully in control of it. I have to say. I live in multiracial community, I can say, even in a multiracial family. Oh. And we must be reaching the end because my dog is starting to cry. So, the query is, the query for you is, what bit of me has offered a blessing to this world? What part of you is a blessing to this world? We're just gonna take a few minutes and then we'll make a sound to mark the end of our time together. I invite you to hold that question in your heart and sit in stillness as we hold space for you and the blessing that you are to get recognized. And friends, we'll take a little more time together, but to add one layer of reflection, how am I the embodiment of my ancestors' wildest dreams? How are you the embodiment of your ancestors' wildest dreams? And friends, that's our time together. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Thank you for being the living embodiment of your ancestors' wildest dreams. Blessings to all of you. Thank you. <laughs>